the last time we saw each other was probably the maybe it was on the field when you got the Walter Payton Man of the Year, but. I can remember after you won the award, which they do a really good job of keeping close to the vest. You know, you won the award, you needed a ride back to the hotel. My wife and I and you in, a, in an SUV for 45 minutes, just kind of you soaking it in, being Walter Payton Man of the Year. What's that feel like? How was that? Yeah, man, it was a good, it's a good feeling. You know, I tell you, um, you know, you don't really do anything for a, a, a reward or anything like that. You do it for the kindness of your heart. You want to help people. Uh, but then you know you start seeing people get the get the award, you know, and seeing everybody uh, how prestigious it is. And so after you know a couple of years of being nominated and not getting it, I was like, man, you know, it'd be cool to get this bad boy. You know, I feel like it just what it represents. You know, I want to be a part of. And so um, you know when I heard my name called and got up there, man, that was a really good feeling. You know, I think that is the most prestigious award in all the sports. And for me to be able to have my name attached to it, you know, that's a really good feeling. Dude, that was, that's awesome, and they really do. You didn't know it until you get it, right? You didn't know until yeah. that night that you were winning the award, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't know until, like, I mean, really halfway through the show, and I wasn't even sure yet, because Peyton Man, I think, he could, you know, he kind of gave me a little a little nudge and was like, I'm hearing good things, you know? So I was like, you know, kind of kind of caught me off guard a little bit, you know, yeah. but then I was like, okay, gave me a chance to, you know, to prepare if I, had, uh, you know, if I won, have something ready, you know, that I can go out there and say, but you know, when you go through that process, it's like, okay, I'm gonna just, you know, you ain't, it's not really as passionate, but then when you find out like, oh, wow, I might really win this bad boy. It's like my, my mom was just racing. That's the hard thing, right in the speech, like you're a winner, but you you want to be humble. It's like the, the least humble thing ever is to like, is to write your acceptance speech and you haven't necessarily won yet, but you got to do it anyways. I went through that. It was like, man, it's hard to write this out, but you're right. As soon as you know, the emotions kind of take over. Yes, sir. Yes, they do, man. It's a great feeling. Um, I had Unique uh, on last week, and not only does he speak really highly of you as a mentor and as like a dude, obviously, but he wants to be Walter Payton Man of the Year, and he said, I want to be Walter Payton Man of the Year like Calais Campbell. So it's really cool to see a younger player, and it also makes me feel old that now like a guy like you or a guy like me, we're like the OGs. <laughs> Uh, but he was definitely talking about you like you were a big vet down in Jacksonville. What's it mean to mentor guys like, and yeah, it's a funny word to use because Tannehill got in trouble using this word last last week. What does it mean to be a vet to a younger player? I'll put it that way. I remember when I was a young buck and I was talking to some of the older players and he's like, I got to protect my pension. So I got to make sure I show you the ropes, you know, teach you the game. And so, you know, I always appreciated, you know, the the mentality of, of uh, just trying to keep the game strong, you know, make sure that the, the young players when they come in, they understand the way of life in the NFL. And so, um, you know, I mean, I've always took great pride in just helping people. I mean, that's just who I am as a nature. I mean, that's, you know, you know part of the Walter Payton Man of the Year thing is that yeah. we just, you know, just, you know, just my whole life I've been raised and brought up in a, a manner where we help the people next to us, around us, our neighbors. And so, um, you know, and, and we depend on them as well, you know, when we need help. So, you know, it's just a family atmosphere. And so we get to the NFL and start playing the, the game I love, which the reason why I love it is because it's about brotherhood. Yeah. It's about, you know, that family atmosphere, that connection that, you know, we all got to, you know, do our individual jobs at a high level to not let the person next to us down. And so for me, man, you know, I just, I see these young guys come in with potential and, you know, just, I just, I just want to help them, you know, develop, help them nurture. So, you know, I'm always, you know, in their ears, you know, telling them, you know, how they can get better, things they need to work on, what I see, trying to help build their confidence. You know, the things that I think that are necessary for young players to develop. But also, I just want to, you know, see you guys do well. You know, I see now we're in year 15. You know, I got a lot of young bucks who are now, you know, old heads themselves. You yeah. Know? Yeah. A lot of my young bucks, you know, uh, I was training with my guy, Marcus Golden. Who, uh, <laughs> yeah, how old is Marcus now? Yeah, he's, I think he's uh, 29, but Jeez. he's in year, uh, he's in year uh, eight, going to year eight this year. And now people look up to him like he's the, the old head in the locker room. And, uh, you know, he was, we were just kind of, you know, just, he was just having a good laugh how quickly, you know, uh, that, that wisdom comes to you, you know, when yeah. the young guys looking up to you. Especially now in the NFL, like, shoot, I remember when I was in St. Louis, I always tell this story that when I was, I was year seven or eight, uh, and at this point, I think you were in Jacksonville maybe uh, around 2014, but, you know, we were the, the older guys because the CBA's changed so much, they were trying to get vets out. So, like, you, you don't have veterans in the locker room as much. 
So for somebody to play 15 years in the NFL is is unbelievable. Somebody to play eight, nine, ten years in the NFL is unbelievable these days, especially at a high level. Like um, I remember, my parking spot was one of the two closest parking spots to the building at 30 years old in St. Louis. So when I got in the league, probably a lot like you in Arizona, you had all those vets, right? You had a bunch of 30 plus year old guys. That doesn't exist anymore. So not only is it important for you to 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 mentor people or whatever you want to call it. But like, if it ain't you, it might not be anybody, right? There's nobody yeah. that's seen 13, 14, 15 years in the NFL anymore. I mean, a lot of these kids, you know, have had, you know, tens of thousands of followers since they were, you know, middle school, right. you know, and then like the real superstars, they come in with this mentality that, you know, like, you know, that I'm a brand. This is bigger than just, you know, me trying to be a good football player. I'm trying to, you know, project our, in our future. And like, you know, that was one of the conversations I had with, uh, with Jalen Ramsey when he was the young buck he understood his level of brand and you know it wasn't really even like something that was a negative thing because i understand you know how your brand can help you in so many ways yeah after football and even in football and so you know we had to have an understanding in the communication that you know I, but, but i realized that you know because a lot of guys come in with that same mentality of like trying to get my brand but they didn't have the work you know, with Jalen, he worked. He still was going to work really hard to be the very, very best. He was motivated to be the best corner in, in sport, you know, in football. So, you know, we had a good understanding and we had, a, you know, a, you know, uh, a good relationship, though. But he did rub some people in, in the building. You know, uh, I remember a couple when he was a rookie. You know, I wasn't there yet. I, I came in in 2007. Team, so I, you know, his rookie was still 16. But when I got there, everybody was like, "Man, you got this one guy. He thinks he's the guy already." Um, you know, and I was like, okay, you know, let me talk to this man, just get a feel for him myself. So I go up to him and I'm talking to him and I realize that, man, he's hungry. You know, he's hungry to be the very, very best. So like the little things that people have issues with, we can adjust, we can, we can make that work. You know, I try to get him to come along on a couple of those things, but at the end of the day, you know, he's not going to hurt us. <laughs> he's going to help us win football games. Yeah. Like what about a guy when he's not, when he's not receptive to being mentored? Are you, have you ever had that, that issue? Oh yeah, all the time. You know, I mean, sometimes you know, I mean, it really comes on like to like these you know young rookies. They come in, you know, guy told me I'm gonna take your job. You know, like, you're supposed to. That's the way. I, I want you to think that way. Good. You know, if you don't have that mentality, you have no chance. I promise you that right yep. now. Yep. You know, you gotta come in with the mentality that you would take my job one day. Now, you know, you know, uh, unlucky for you is I'm really good at my job. You know, so as hard as you want to work, I'm gonna work harder. You know, and but I'm but I'm, but the thing about it though is is that same guy. I still, every single time I got a chance to teach him something, I taught him something, you know? And even though he was reluctant at first, cause he was like, you know, man, we do the competition. I was like, as much as you think I'm the competition, I'm really not, you know? I mean, if, if you could be as good as me on the field, this team is gonna be a whole lot better. If you could be better than me, this team will be a whole lot better. I, I had some young, some young guys who just, you know, you know, people that just want to do it themselves sometimes, you know, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I feel like everybody learns different. You know, you can't, you can't try to help everybody the same. And so a lot of times, you know, with those guys who kind of want a little more independency, you know, uh, I, I just try, I, I have less, but I try to help them more outside of football. You know, if you don't yeah. want football help, man, there's still a lot of things you need to learn, you know, especially how to take care of your money, how to take care of your body, how to watch tape. So, you know, that's some stuff that, you know, that you ain't got to be about football all the time, too. So uh, how to manage your family. That's another one, That's the truth, dude, like the off the field shit, because a lot of times these young guys are afraid to go to the coaches and afraid to go to people in the facility because, you know, like ultimately those are the people paying them. So there's a conflict of interest there, you know, so it's nice to have somebody who's on your team that can help you navigate those waters. You know what I mean? Because that's the most complicated stuff, I feel like, for a 22-year-old guy. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, all that stuff takes away from football. And, like, you know, you only get a small window to be really, really good at football. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really on top of these guys about just, you know, managing the, the, you know, the outside world so they can, you know, dedicate themselves the best they can to football. Listen to the full podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, wherever you want to get the podcast, you can get the podcast. Pretty simple. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Podcasts get pretty wild. This is real tame.